London Olympics, um, which we all knew it was going to happen, absolutely gripped this country. And as you say, you were more aware. Um, you've been knighted, meanwhile. I mean, that is a fantastic honour. And also flag bearer for the London Olympics. What an honour that must have been. That was huge. And <laughs> it was a strange feeling when I walked into the stadium. I remember walking in there and just the instant we were announced and, and you stepped into the arena, the noise and just the, the visual impact of everything, that confetti cannons going off and, you know, this roar from the crowd. And I just thought, this is pretty special. You know, this is the moment where once in a lifetime, you, you've been chosen to lead your country out at home Olympics. You know, I was happy just being part of the Olympic team 12 years ago in Sydney, thinking this is probably my one shot ever to be at the Olympic Games. And here's me four games later being chosen to carry in the flag. It doesn't get any better than that. And I remember thinking at that time, do you know what, no matter what happens in the racing, whether I win, you know, first, second, third, fourth, whatever, it's been worth it. The four years of training has been worth it to get to this point. And it, it took pressure off me, strangely, because I thought, well, you know, what an experience. That it hasn't been a, you know, if it doesn't work out, it hasn't been a wasted four years. This has been worth it for this. You're going into the London Olympics. You're the flag bearer. You're the centre of attraction. We're expecting a lot from you. Were the expectations getting really high for you? Well, there's no such thing as an Olympics without pressure or without expectation. No. You, you put it on yourself because it means so much to you and to your coaches and to your family and to everybody that's been part of it along the way. They know. But you have won three golds. You've We're won, expecting you. You've to won get three more. golds. You have expectation, but but it it's more about just putting that aside because you know what one person perceives pressure, another wouldn't perceive at all. You know, you could perceive pressure driving your car to work one day because you've only just passed your test and it's a new skill and it's a new challenge and you can be stressed. You can sometimes drive and you're not even aware you, when you get to your destination, you're so relaxed. Talking in front of a camera, some people will find that really stressful. Some people, like yourself, it's your job, you don't think twice about it. Not that It's not that our job, you know, it was second nature and we didn't feel stress. It was that we were train, trained and we were training ourselves to focus on the performance and nothing else, not to think about the crowds, not to think about, you know, the TV, not to think about the fact that if you win this, it'd be a gold medal on your home soil in front of a home crowd. None of that. It, and not even thinking about the, the what ifs if it goes wrong. You know, it, you just didn't let that enter your brain at all. It was all about performance. It was all about your strategy for how you're going to win this race. And by, by keeping it very simple and breaking it down to your day to day, you know, the four or five days beforehand, that's when you can feel it the most stress. So you don't think about the racing. All you're thinking about is today. What are we doing today? Right, you're getting up at this time, you're going to the dining hall at this time, you've got your massage at this time, you've got your track session at this time. Break it down and just think about one step at a time. And before you know it, you're there on race day and, and you can actually enjoy it. Let me reverse the, the question then. You're winning lots of golds, you're winning silvers, Commonwealth golds. The fact that you've won four Olympic golds going into this one, mm -hmm. is that in a way a big advantage because you have been there, you've been the experience, you've done it. I think it helped because I felt that there's nothing that can take away from that. You know, if I'd gone to the Games and I hadn't won, it, no one's going to take away your four gold medals from you. And I wasn't going to miss that opportunity to compete in London just because of the fear of, oh, I don't want to take a sheen off this career. I wanted to be there so badly and I knew that when the Games were announced in 2005, I was going to do everything within my powers to be there. And, you know, it just, it was a, a privilege to be there, but to actually win a gold or two gold medals was, was amazing. You're obviously aware that S Sir Stephen Redgrave, who's been a fine ambassador like you, has got five Olympic golds, and here's Sir Christopher Hoy going in to get two golds. And let's talk about those two golds and, and, and with your parents as well, what, what it was for you. Well, the, the team sprint, again, it was like Beijing. It was a big surprise. You know, we knew it was possible, but again, you don't let yourself, you don't entertain these thoughts of, you know, can we beat the French? Can, can we beat the Germans? What about the Aussies? They went well at the World Championships. You know, you don't start thinking about anybody else. You think, right, we've got Phil, Jason and me, three laps. It's going to be the tightest, most, you know, technically right ride that we can possibly do. We're going to do the best time we can and we're going to see where we land and you know we went up there in the qualifying we didn't break the world record but we were only less than a tenth off the world record 
the best time we'd done since Beijing, you know, for four years, qualified quickest, and it was just like, wow, it's history repeating itself. You know, this is, it's, it's possible here. Um, the final, or the, the last two rides, we broke the world record again, and it was unbelievable to think, you know, surely this can't be happening again. The domination from the four years that everybody thought was over, we were back, and, and it took the pressure off me personally, took the pressure off the team, um, and just the enjoyment of it, you know, to be able to, to, to soak up this unbelievable noise and atmosphere. And it, was, it wasn't just the Brits that were talking about it, all the other nations that were competing in the velodrome were saying, we've never experienced a noise like this, you know, that just this cauldron of energy and, and just, you know, a passion that the crowd were, were conveying to everybody. Well, I'm beginning to understand too why you like the Kieran so much, <laughs> because here we go, a chance to be our greatest ever Olympian mm. in terms of of gold medals, um, and so Stephen is there, and, and what a day that was. Well, it's a funny one now because you look back and most of your memories, or my memories now, are from the video, because I've watched the video so many times, and you try and separate that from your actual first person experience of it all. And I just remember at the time, sitting there in the track centre with about 15 minutes to go, looking around and just thinking, well, you know what, Whatever happens today, I'm going to enjoy this now. And that had been drummed into me by Steve Peters, our team psychologist. He was saying, you have to enjoy this. You have to realise this is an opportunity. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to, to worry about here. If you relax and enjoy it and let your, execute your game plan, then you're going to give yourself the best chance of winning. If you win, brilliant. If you don't, that's life. But it was like nothing else. Sit, sitting on the start line, hearing your name read out, giving the, the crowd a little wave, and thinking this is it, this is all the training, all the pain and suffering and you know the highs and lows for the last four years have been culminating on this and this is my last Olympic appearance. Here we go and you know to, to step up there and about a lap and a half to go you know I started to turn it on a little bit and it was Max Levy the German had made a move fairly early on and I'd gone to the front and I didn't want to expend too much energy too soon which I'd done in the semi-final and the coaches had pointed that out and said you've got to be a bit more you know progressive with your 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 um, drive don't go flat out with two laps give it a little bit control it and then hit it again hard with a lap to go and uh, I took that advice but then Max Levy the German had actually started his move a bit earlier with a lap to go he was next to me with three quarters of a lap to go he's actually passed me half lap to go he almost had a full bite length in which case it would have been game over he would have taken my line and I would have been second or third or fourth but I just seemed to have this, I don't know, this this drive that I thought, well, you know what, I'm not on top of the gear yet. I'm still still building the speed. I had a much bigger gear for the final that I used, I selected for the final. And I was just driving with everything. I thought, you know what, if he's going to beat me, he's going to have to get around me. And I just held my nerve, held, held the line, stayed on the black line and drove with everything I had and uh, put my head down on the home straight. Didn't want to look, lunged for the line and then heard the roar. And it was, yeah, phenomenal seventh visit to the podium. I, I deliberately waited until London because of all the standing on the podiums for the six goals and the silver, London must have been the greatest feeling you could have. It was and up until that point I would have sworn that Athens was going to be the best because it's your first time. Hmm. First time I heard my name and then Olympic champion after it and I thought that's the greatest feeling you could ever have in your career. But this was way beyond that, you know, to just to stand there and before I even got on the podium, I was a mess, you know, I was like, this isn't going to go well. You know, I couldn't even hold the tears back before I'd been announced. And it was just looking around and you're picking out people from the crowd, your family, your friends, teammates, sponsors, people who've been part of your journey. Then looking down in front of the podium and there was your whole support crew, your coaches, you know, everybody that had been along the way with you and realising this is it, you know, it, it's all been worth it. And, you know, you hear the national anthem and you realise, wow, it's another gold medal for Britain.